Oh, hey everybody. How's it going? All right. I am excited for this week's audio tips with Tyler. Uh, I am Tyler Blanchard and uh, from Good Cat Productions. Coming to you from Treehouse Studios. And today we're talking about DIY acoustics. Uh, I've got a lot of material. Uh, we're gonna have to break this up into a couple ones, but uh, I'm gonna give you as much information today as I can. Um, so while we let a few people hop on and find the live, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit more about our, us and uh, what we're up to. So uh, please, if you haven't already, check out our website, tree-house-studios.com. Uh, that's the central hub for our business, uh, Treehouse Studios, where we record, Good Cat Productions, where we make lots of music, and uh, Piano Lessons with Mara, or Lessons with Mara, sorry, <laughs> where my lovely partner, uh, Mara, teaches music to all ages. Um, ooh, and there's some great pictures on that website, uh, thanks to Rebecca Guglielmus Photography. Um, she's got a little promo going on right now where she's doing porch portraits. She'll come to your house and take socially distant portraits of you. Get some really nice photos um, uh, despite the time. Um, be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram at Good Cat Productions to keep getting great information and uh, hearing cool music from us. And please, please, please share with your musician friends. Uh, we are just trying to get this knowledge out here. Um, so share it with uh, your friends. Make sure you know a couple of musicians and uh, let's spread it around. Um, all right. Couple promotions going on right now through Good Cat Productions. Uh, we're doing free home recording consultations where you can get a personal 30 minute chat with me to talk about your specific recording situation at home. Uh, I've actually got one scheduled for 3 o'clock today, so <laughs> um, I'm excited to, to talk to that first person there. Uh, you can schedule that on Facebook with us and uh, set up our time. Do, 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 do. Oh, and then our first mix free. We're going to have a video coming out a little bit later today. Uh, we're just putting the final touches on that, and you can get some more information about mixing with Good Cat Productions. All right, so uh, this is Audio Tips with Tyler. We're going live weekly to uh, share my experience and knowledge with all you DIY creatives out there. Um, I'll do a lecture, and then I'm going to do a bunch of demonstrations for you and answer any questions that you guys have. Um, if something I'm saying doesn't make sense or to you during my presentation, just go ahead and write it in the comments and my partner will uh, let me know and I'll do my best to explain. Um, and again, please share with your musician friends. All right, all right, cool. That's all of that stuff. Now we get into our topic today, DIY acoustics. Let's talk uh, about acoustics. What does that mean? Um, <clears throat> well, acoustics is the study of sound waves and how they interact with the world around us. Um, <clears throat> so we're gonna be focusing on how, uh, how waves interact with the, the world around us when we're trying to record at home. Mm -hmm. So, if you know, if you can picture uh, like waves in water, think of a clear pond or a bowl of water or something, you drop something in and it has that ripple effect, right? Those waves go up and down. Um, sound waves are very similar to those waves in water, except uh, the waves in water are two-dimensional, right? They're going all across that flat plane. And sound waves are three-dimensional, right? When I'm, I'm speaking here out of my mouth, Waves are going forward, they're going upwards, they're going back, and they're even going around, all around, um, because they travel in three dimensions. Okay. Um, another important thing to note about waves is that uh, you've heard probably high frequency and low frequency. Um, so that corresponds not just to their pitch, but also the, the actual size of the wave. So there's some waves, some of the highest pitches uh, you might find on a piano, are actually going to be about two centimeters wide, long. Uh, that's probably not quite to scale, but very small. And then some of the lower ones, uh, waveforms can be bigger, like this. And then some of the lowest ones, you can hear that a little bit, those can be up to 20 meters long. That's about 60 feet. Uh, so that's pretty huge. So the size of the waves is, is different. and the different sizes are going to interact with the same materials in different ways. Okay, so that's important to know. That we have to treat high frequencies and low frequencies different, differently when we're talking about acoustics. Okay? Um, bum, 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 bum. All right, in general, hard, flat surfaces are going to reflect sound waves and, and kind of have them bounce off 
and, and keep going. Um, whereas soft surfaces like foam or a pillow or a blanket or a carpet, those things are going to absorb sound frequencies. Okay, so the hard things are going to reflect, um, soft things are going to absorb. Um, now, besides absorbing and being reflected, sound waves can also be uh, refracted or diffused. So let's say we've got a big, we got a big sound wave coming over here, and this isn't a flat wall but it's actually a big round surface. So when this wave comes, some of the energy is gonna bounce off back this way, but some of it's also gonna go this way, and some's gonna go this way, and this way, and this way. So this one big loud wave um, hit this round thing, and it, it broke the wave up into uh, multiple waves with less energy. Still the same size, but less energy in them, so not as loud. Um, so that's, that's another important thing to know. That's what diffusion or refraction. And you can diffuse and refract not only with uh, something that's round like this, um, but also something that's jagged. There's oftentimes um, these diffusers that are kind of all different blocks of wood at different sizes, and that will um, that's good for diffusing like different uh, sound frequencies. All right, cool. Um, so we talked a little bit about refraction and diffusion. Uh, let's talk about reverb. So. Reverb is really, really important. It's one of the most important things um, about capturing audio because reverb gives your brain subconscious clues as to the space that the sound is coming from. Okay, if you've ever listened, listened to completely dry vocals without any reverb on, something recorded in an isolation booth or something like that, it, it doesn't sound right. It just sounds kind of thin and, and, and sounds weird. Uh, often vocalists will react to it and oh, it doesn't sound good. Put some reverb on it, right? To give it that kind of full sound. Um, and you can tell what space something is coming from um, based on the reverb. So you know sometimes it can either sound like the sound is right up against your ear, really close, or it can sound like it's in a medium-sized room or in a huge cathedral. You've heard that kind of reverb where it's like, oh that's coming from inside a huge church, right? Um, so that's it's all the reverb that's telling you what where that space is coming from. Um, so reverb is super, super important. And reverb is comprised of all the sound waves bouncing off the space around you, okay? So, do a little quick wipe down here. And we're gonna do a little demonstration of, of how reverb is comprised. So I'm gonna put a little, little guy. Uh, again, I'm here for the audio engineering, not the drawing. Please, oh, oh God. Uh, He's smiling, he's happy at least. Uh, that's, that's an arm, let's get another, another arm. arm. Maybe, yeah, okay, all right, let's stop drawing. <laughs> um, okay, so this is my guy, he's singing. We're gonna give him a little mic stand to sing into. All right, so he's singing, ah! And <laughs> this microphone is gonna pick up a lot of the direct sound coming right from his mouth, right? But like we talked about, sound is gonna travel in three dimensions. It's not just gonna go straight in front. It's also going to go up to the ceiling and bounce and bounce and bounce around and eventually get its way back to the mic. It's also going to go back behind him and come back, right? So some of these closer ones, these are what we're going to call early reflections, right? And they're going to come and they're going to blend in with that initial sound um, and just give it that character that we've been talking about, that give it that space, I like to call it, right? If something has space, it, it, you can tell where it's coming. Um, and then these late reflections, the ones bouncing off the walls over here and, and all of this, those are going to come in later and give you that nice reverb tail, that decay. Okay. So how do we get a nice reverb in a room? Well, uh, generally, there, there's a couple different standards to think about when we're talking about uh, rooms in, uh, for studios. Uh, a couple of the things that they want to see are uh, acoustic isolation separation from the outside world, so the outside sounds aren't getting in, like that truck rumbling down or, or thunder, um, anything like that that's gonna get in your tracks, right? We're gonna separate from the outside world. Um, next thing is frequency balance, making sure that the room doesn't adversely affect the, the, the frequency content of a sound, right? It's not gonna overly absorb the high frequency from having too much absorption, or uh, the low frequencies aren't gonna build up too much because we don't have enough, enough absorption down in that range. Um, 
So we have to be careful about balancing those things. And, and one of the rules I first heard is like 60-40 rule, right? You wanna have about 60% one thing, 40% the other thing. For a more live room, you'd have about 60% reflective surfaces and about 40% absorption, right? For a, a, a more dead room, a, a quieter room with less reverb, you'd go about 60% absorption, 40% uh, reflection. Okay. Um, so those are the ways that, that you can kind of go. That's, that, that's the kind of general range. You don't want to go too far in one direction or uh, you're going to get an over build up with an overly loud room, live room or if there's too much absorption, it's really dead. Now, sometimes you do want that in, in like an isolation booth, uh, but that has to be used carefully. And then if you are using an isolation booth, you have to carefully put reverb back in the signal um, so it does sound great. Um, uh, but I didn't talk about diffusion there, right? So when we talked about the 60-40 rule. Some people say that it should be about 25% absorption, 25% diffusion, and the other 50% reflection. So it's about the same, but then you know you need you need the balance of absorption and reflection for a nice nice reverb sound. Um, but again, when we're dealing with our home space, we don't always have as much choice in what we get. But what you can do is you can look around your space and think, okay, all right, this is the big soft thing. This is going to absorb sound. Uh, these curtains, they're going to absorb sound. This wall is going to reflect sound. And try to think to yourself, is this room about half, half and half? Is it about half and half? Um, and if it's not, and you're not liking what you're sounding, the way things are sounding in that room, then you can introduce some more absorption, or you can take some absorption away to, to change the character of that room. Okay. Do, do, do. All right. The next thing I want to talk to you guys about is the good rule. Okay, How do you get a good sound? Um, it's, it's made up of a lot of different things. I, I've got five things listed here. So if you want a good sound, you need good acoustics, good mic, good placement, good instrument, and a good performance. And that's how you get a good sound. So when we talk about good acoustics, that's what we're talking about today, right? The balance of, of the, the space so that we get a nice reverb, we're not getting a buildup of any certain frequencies, uh, we're not overly absorbing certain frequencies to, to negatively affect the, the, the content of the sound. When we talk about a good mic, it doesn't mean that it has to be the most expensive or best microphone. It just needs to be the right microphone for the job, right? So you can't use a dynamic microphone and expect it to sound, get a, capture as detailed a sound as a condenser microphone. You just can't do it. But sometimes the dynamics are the right choice for the job, right? If you want to get a nice hit on a, a, a percussive element, you know, it's, it's the right thing to use. So. It's not about having the best mic, but the right mic for the job. You have to think about that. Um, when we talk about good placement, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, we mentioned it last week. We'll talk about it in just a second. When we talk about a good instrument, that means uh, not that it's the best and most expensive instrument, but they, they, you take care of it and you like the way that it sounds. If you have a guitar, it means making sure that it's in tune, making sure the, the strings are, are new but not too new, uh, but broken in. If you have are, are, are recording your voice, you got to make sure that it is taken care of. It's not overly fired. Maybe you want to have some tea with some honey, right? You want to warm up. You want to make sure it's in good shape. Um, and then finally, a good performance. You know, it's all about getting that 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 great take. Sometimes one of the the, the things that an audio engineer can do is, is help bring out that best performance, um, give you different suggestions. Maybe you have someone else who's listening uh, objectively to think, hmm, that was pretty good, but maybe let's try it like this. Um, that's one of the things that audio engineers help with. Um, and if you're recording by yourself, that's something you're going to have to develop. Or maybe you can get someone to help you uh, listen objectively while you're recording. Um, but let's talk about uh, placement in a room. Placement in a room. So uh, again, let's avoid placing any microphones right in the middle of the room. If we do place a microphone right in the middle of the room, what's going to happen is, is uh, the sound is going to bounce off of walls, especially if they're parallel, and come back at the same time or almost the same time. And those waves are going to fight each other and cause phasing issues. Now, this is uh, sometimes used creatively as an effect, uh, putting a phaser on something. Um, it can be really cool on, on drums or on guitars, but if you're trying to get a clean acoustic recording, not the kind of thing you want, right? So you want to avoid middle of the room placement, especially when there's parallel walls. 
Um, bum, 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 bum. And then we want to be aware of where we're pointing uh, the, the microphone, right? Where we're pointing the ear of the microphone. For one of these guys, the ear's pointing this way, right? It's listening this way. So how much direct sound versus reverberated sound in the room do we want to get? Okay, so this is one thing you want to be aware of. And again, there's no right answer. It's all about what you like and what you're trying to get with this particular recording. So experiment with it, try some things out, and see what sounds good to you. And then uh, another place to be careful, we talked about the middle of the room, another place where sometimes we get frequency buildup is in the corners or of the room, right? So be careful about putting like, any mics too far into a corner or, or too close to a wall or pointing at a wall, because um, you can get some weird pickup. Maybe it's something you like, check it out, but something to be aware of. All right. Cool. All right, let's recap that good rule of five. For good sound, we want to have good acoustics, good mic, good placement, good instrument, and a good performance, and then we'll get a good sound. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about acoustics, and let me give you some of my thoughts for uh, some DIY acoustic treatments. Okay, so again, absorption is frequency dependent. Different frequencies are gonna respond differently to the same materials. Um, so dense, porous things are good at absorbing high frequencies, like, here we go. This is a little little piece of acoustic boom I cut out, foam I cut out. Usually it comes in like two foot by two foot um, pieces, or there's different ways you can buy it. But it's uh, it's porous, it's foam, right? It's got lots of little holes in it. Um, it's pretty dense, that's what makes it acoustic foam. It's more dense than other foams. Um, and then, so it's gonna absorb that high frequency, but also you can see that it's it's ridged, right? It's got these, these ridges on it. And so that is going to work to uh, diffuse the sound, right? To break up those waves. Um, so for a small wave, it, you know, in this range, it's going to break it up. If it's a huge wave, it's not going to care too much about these small spikes, though, right? It's just going to be one big wall and bounce off of it. So for lower frequencies, we need something different. What we need is something uh, that's bigger and uh, more pliable, right? One of my favorite things to think of as a bass trap is your couch. It's a big, dense piece of foam, right? Uh, and it's gonna absorb some of those low frequencies. So those are good. Uh, couch cushions are good, all that stuff, okay? Um, ooh, okay, let's talk about room isolation. So if you are at your own home when you're recording are getting that outside noise, there's a couple of things we can do to help with that. One thing is uh, curtains, okay? You see we've got some nice thick curtains going over, totally over the outside uh, of the, the window can't see any of the window. Um, that's going to help. Also, the other thing is layers. This is a, 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 the first curtain. We've got two layers of curtains here. So that's going to create an air pocket, which is going to help absorb all frequencies of sound. Air pocket is really good for absorption. Um, so I've got multiple layers of curtains here, and that's going to really help the absorption, keeping uh, things isolated from the outside. All right, another thing you can think about when we come over to the door, um, what I've done in the past when we're getting noise from the door is to hang a blanket over top of this. And what I'll do is I'll take nails or thumbtacks or something, and you can put them right into the top of this uh, this trim here where no one's going to see it. <clears throat> and then you just take a nice big blanket or two, and you can hang it right over top. That's going to keep the noise from seeping in any of the cracks. Um, and again, give you a, a little bit of an air pocket um, that's going to help keep the sun back. Okay. Um, bum, 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 bum. All right. On a smaller scale, uh, another thing for room isolation is think about your floors. If you have carpets or rugs, um, those things are going to be good. The thicker, the better. The more, um, more layers, the better too. If you have the, the kind of under carpet stuff and then the carpet, that would be good. And if you're having problems with low frequency transmitting uh, below you, like drums or bass you're playing and it's getting really loud or, or rumbling the floor, you can think about layering, putting multiple layers. If you have some thinner carpets or some of those pads, and kind of layering them up. Um, it's a good way to stop that sound from transmitting. Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay, another thing we can use that you probably got in your house is a closet. You've got a closet full of clothes. 
that's a lot of dense material, right? And it, it's going to help just even break up the sound. And if you've got a square room, it's going to give you some relief, right? It's going to get that sound somewhere to go and, and not come back. So that's really, really good. Uh, you can just open up the door if you have if you're recording in a room with a closet. Just open up that door and let sound go in there. Um, another way you can use it is uh, to actually point your microphone. Just a moment, uh, I got some demonstrations for you. Okay, then we've got uh, our, our homemade gobos or battles. So these things are gobos or go-betweens are some movable acoustic treatment that you can put in between sound sources. So if you're trying to like um, record multiple things at once, you've got multiple singers or multiple uh, people in, in the same room and you want to have some acoustic separation, put gobos there or if you're in a really reflective room you can put this movable acoustic treatment somewhere um, to keep it from getting too out of hand so this is a professional one where it's acoustic foam on one side and a hard plastic surface that's going to reflect on the other side so this way you can choose if you want to straight up absorb sound or if you want it to reflect around uh, and get more of a live reverberant sound out of the room um, so this is something, but what can we do? Well, get our trusty lamp back, right? So with our lamp again, we can spread out our arms and put a blanket over it. All right, there you go. It's gonna absorb. Uh, you wanna do more? Add more layers. It's gonna make it more dense. It might get a little bit of an air pocket. And it's going to help absorb more sound. Right? So right now, if I wanted to uh, put this up, oh yeah, that's definitely going to do something for sure. All right, there's one homemade. Um, or you can throw these over your trusty music stand. All right, put them over here. If you want to make something really wide, you can get really crazy. You could put a broom over here, and then put a bunch of blankets. Oh man, I got so many ideas. <laughs> Hit me up for a home recording consultation. You know, we can work with what you've gotten and figure out some creative solutions. Um, but let me show you a couple more things. Um, what else do I have here? Yep. All right. So let's talk about recording for voice more. Um, recording for voice. There's two theories of reducing reflections. Um, <clears throat> if I've got my microphone here, uh, I can put my absorption behind it like a reflection shield. Um, there's a couple companies that have these sort of things. And what that's gonna do is, is say I'm singing this way or, or making noise this way, it's gonna absorb everything that's behind that. Like, uh, hey, a little go over here. So if I'm singing into this, the idea is that all, the, the majority of the sound is gonna get trapped here and not travel around the room and create a lot of reverb. So that, that's one theory. The other theory is that the microphone is listening this way, right? So I want to put the, the absorption behind me because it's listening this way. So I'm going to let the noise go out this way so it's not bouncing around weirdly in my reflection shield and, and making weird face uh, interactions. Um, I'm going to let the sound come out here, but if it any does come back, it's going to get absorbed, get picked up either by this or by my own body and not make it into the microphone. Um, so there's two different ways we can look at it. Now, what I think personally is, if you're in a small boxy room that really doesn't sound good, you don't want any of that reverb getting in, then you're best off trying to keep it in front, right? Trying to not, trying to, uh, not let any of those, those reflections happen in the first place, right? So have your absorption behind if the room doesn't sound good have to be careful you don't have too much low frequency in your sound source because um, that can go through a small gobo like this and still build up in the room um, and you have to make sure uh, that it's just not too loud in here and, and reflections are coming back and, and, and making weird phase interactions um, that's what I would worry about but if it's a quieter sound source you got a smaller voice and the room doesn't sound good maybe go this way if you've got a bigger room it maybe sounds okay but you don't want too much reverb or you don't want to be able to control the reverb post-production then I would say go for it behind you okay um, now for this I was sitting down and like we talked about before if 
you're recording vocals, you don't want to be sitting down. You want to have good posture. You want to be able to stand up, right? So what I would do, I would take something like this, and I would put it up on a chair. Just put it up on a chair. That way I can grab my mic stand. I can put it right here. Get these things as close as I can, right? And then sing this way. I'm not right in the middle of my room. I'm kind of off to one corner, but not all the way in the corner. All right, I'm standing up. I've got good posture. I'm singing into uh, my reflection shoe, right? So we could simply turn this around like this. Um, but what if you don't have something like this? Another great thing to use for acoustic treatment um, you can actually build yourself with couch cushions. Uh, I have done some crazy things with couch cushions. Um, the lower ones are nice because they're a little bit more structured. So if I was over here, I might try to use a table or something that's built in that's going to help me get it right off the floor so I don't have to worry about building all the way up from the floor. <clears throat> I'm going to start by putting my structural cushions. getting them in place. And again, if I can get something that's kind of open up, not super right angle, that looks pretty good. Then I'm going to add less structural pillows on top. Just play around with balancing things. That looks pretty good. Hey, there we go. And then once you've got your structure, you know what? Let's sneak a little loose pillow in here. <laughs> that way we're not so boxy. Once you've got that figured out, then it's time for blankets over top. Again, we're going to create a <clears throat> create another layer, create some air pockets. Just like that. And it might look crazy. But you'd be surprised what this will do for the sound. Again, you want it kind of cozy in here. Have my microphone. <laughs> Have my microphone right about here, right? This way I'm singing out into a nice big open room, right? There's some reverb coming out, and there's gonna get it's gonna get a little bit in here, right? Which is gonna be nice because we like a little bit of reverb. It gives us a, a sense of space, but. Most of it is going to be coming in here, getting dead end, and not coming into the microphone. All right, so I like this setup a lot. Um, ba -ba -ba -bum, ba -ba -bum. Let's see, what else? I do have a question. Oh, we have a question? Yes. All right. From Dan, will this have more of an impact in recording with a louder source of sound or a softer source? Or a softer one. Will the behind-the-back uh, acoustic treatments? That's what I'm thinking. Or, we're, we're or maybe about, these yeah. gobos. These gobos for a louder source. Um, it depends on how close you're micing your loud sound source. With a loud sound source, depending on how close you are, you're just going to get pretty much direct sound, right? Um, I, I think what's most important for loud sound sources is having enough space for the sound to go. Uh, I've had uh, some bad experiences trying to record large guitar cabinets, uh, amps in small spaces like an isolation booth. Even if it, it sounds good in that room, there's just, it's just pushing too much noise. The, the most important thing for loud sound sources, I'd say, if you're trying to get something that's a clean recording, that's not distorted, is having enough space. Um, or if you can, turn it down, right? If you're recording it, maybe it doesn't need to be shake the house loud. Um, but I, I'd say for, for a loud sound source, the most important thing is having enough space. Um, otherwise, no matter what, if you try to record drums in a, in a really small room, there, there's just too much energy, too much sound pressure level, waves bouncing off all the place. It, it, it's gonna be really hard to get a good recording of a loud sound source in a small space. Um, uh, I'm not sure if that answers your question, but uh, I hope it, it, it helps. And uh, if you do have uh, specific questions, I, I'd say 
contact me for to set up a free home recording consultation, and I can talk to you about your specific situation and give to you some advice. Again, 30-minute chat for free. Um, cool. All right. <laughs> Thanks for the question, Dan. I appreciate that. Uh, that was good, and maybe I will talk about that more in our next uh, acoustics chat that we do. He said definitely does. Good. Oh, cool. Awesome. Great. <laughs> um, okay. Another thing about uh, these acoustic treatments, your, your stacking pillows, they're probably going to fall over. I'm, I'm a pro, so I got this up uh, in one shot, but it might knock down. That's okay, because then you can rebuild it and, and learn and do it better next time. Again, it's all about experimenting and trying different things and trying what works best for you in your situation uh, and helps you get the sound that you're going for. Um, cool. All right. All right. Okay. We've gotten through all the demonstrations here. Um, there's one more thing that I want to do, one more demonstration, which is to, to really show you uh, the, the difference of reverbs in, in different rooms. Um, is there something there? Sorry, Ant. Sorry, Ant. <laughs> he yeah. asked earlier, so blankets are a viable option for wall muffling? Yes, yes, blankets are good. Um, if you are if you got super uh, reflective walls, uh, blankets are good. I, I like fuzzy blankets because they're fuzzy, they're textured. Uh, which is going to help break up the sound a little bit. They also move. If you've got a real, uh, we've got one blanket which is really fuzzy on one side, and the other side is kind of uh, it, it's it's like a sheet almost. Um, it's a it's a comforter is what it is. So one side is kind of reflective, and then the other side is more absorptive. So so that's something to be aware of. Also the thickness of the blankets. Um, if it's a lightweight, it's not going to do too much. It'll take out some of the high frequency stuff, but not much else. Um, what one thing that I invested in is a whole bunch of moving blankets. I got the thickest ones that I could and like a hundred or a, a 12 pack, about a hundred bucks. <laughs> and these are, are nice and you can layer them up um, to create bigger bass traps or, or whatever you need. Um, so I like these a lot. Denser the better is, is one of the more important things when we're talking about blankets um, and, and thinking about that. Because if you just covered your whole room in blankets, that are thin, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna cut out that, that highest frequencies, but you're not gonna affect the lower frequencies. So you're still gonna have that low frequency rumble, but it's gonna sound kind of underwater. You're gonna get that kind of low pass uh, filtering effect that uh, sometimes we really like, but some, we don't always want. So something to be aware of. Yeah? All right. Um, so that's that's uh, one thing about blankets. Um, and, and it, that was an important thing to know about the texture of the blanket. Um, always kind of go fuzzy side out if you're doing something like this. Fuzzy side out. Um, another thing you can even do is, if you wanted to go really crazy, is create a texture on the blanket by folding it. Let's see. Yeah. You know what? I thought about this. I haven't really tried it out too much. It's an idea I'm going to have to work on, and I'll get back to you guys in our, in our next acoustic one. Okay, but. Anyway, here's my last little demonstration for everybody. I'm really excited about this, and this is something that will we'll, uh, bounce out as audio and, and get to you guys on Monday. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into different rooms in our studio space here to show you uh, how the reverb is affected. Um, we're gonna go into our isolation booth, into our control room, which is kind of uh, more on the dead side, kind of the 60% the absorption, 40% reflection. Um, we're gonna go into our bathroom, which is small and highly reflective. Uh, if you ever sing it in the shower, you know it sounds pretty good. You get that nice thick reverb on it. Uh, we're gonna go into our hallway that has a little bit of a flutter echo. It's got a lots of boxy walls, so you get that kind of uh, phase interaction that we don't like. And then I'm gonna come back down here into what's normally our live room, but I've got a lot of absorption stuff I've seen here. It's a, it's, it's a little bit on the dead side right now. Um, because of the way we have it set up for this. Um, so I am going to come grab this mic, grab this live machine. Uh, oh, it's so bright. <laughs> All right, hey everybody, how's it going? So we're gonna take a little trip up the stairs here. I've been looking forward to doing this all week. <laughs> I really have. I've been thinking of it. All right, cool. So this is uh, this is our studio space and we're going to come into our isolation booth. This is the whisper room. 
I can tell immediately that it's a lot more quiet in here. Um, so I have got, um, I've got my other recording device set up right here. This is my phone with that uh, easy, easy record, easy voice record. Um, and I'm going to use this to capture high quality audio. Um, so that I can bounce it out to you guys. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do three things in here I'm gonna say something I'm gonna sing something and I'm gonna yell something so you can hear the reverb now This is an isolation booth, but there is some reverb here, right? We don't want it to be completely dead. We want no outside noises. All right <clears throat> We're recording So I'm gonna say Welcome to audio tips with Tyler Who would like to eat some food? Meow. Uh, I'm saying, uh, what I'm singing here is a little song that we sing to our cats when it's time to f eat. Uh, we, we say, who would like to eat some food? And they respond with a meow or by sitting and then they get their food. But anyway, all right, <laughs> we're in this, our, our kind of a uh, more damp room, uh, more dead room. Welcome to Audio Tips with Tyler. Who would like to eat some food? Meow. Cool. So one thing I noticed there on my recording here is when I did the meow in the isolation booth, it was, it clipped. All right, we talked a little bit about clipping last time. Um, clipping is no good. So here is our bathroom. Oh, can you hear the difference there? All right. <clears throat> Welcome to Audio Tips with Tyler. Who would like to eat some food? Meow. All right. Cool. Heard that. Nice thick reverb there. Oh, we got some air conditioning. This is our little uh, little stairwell. Ah, can you hear that? Ah, it sounds bad. Flutter echo. All right. <clears throat> Welcome to Audio Tips with Tyler. Who would like to eat some food? Meow. Oh, I can hear it on that loud one. Vicious. All right, and then last one down here in our big live room. <clears throat> Welcome to Audio Tips with Tyler. Who would like to eat some food? Meow. All right, <laughs> thanks for hanging with me, guys. Uh, all right, I'm just making sure we got this. Hey, we got it. My phone didn't die. All right, cool. So I've got this recording. I'm going to chop those up uh, better together and, and put them up on SoundCloud. We'll have that up for you on Monday so you can hear the difference between the different rooms and how they sound. Um, I think it's going to be really cool uh, to hear that. Um, I'm excited. <laughs> I hope you guys are too. All right. Um, so that's everything that I had scheduled for today. Uh, we made it through all that good stuff. Uh, are there any other questions or anything else you guys want to ask me um, about today's lesson or, or anything else in general? Just go ahead and pop it in the comments. <clears throat> um, but I have to say thank you for tuning in for Audio Tips with Tyler. Um, check out our website, tree-house-studios.com uh, for lots of information about us and to get in touch with us. Uh, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, uh, check us out on SoundCloud and YouTube for lots of examples of our works, more videos about what we are and uh, our pro promotions. Uh, and please share with your musician friends. Spread the word. Let's uh, get it out there. Um, again, we've got our free home recording consultation. So if you want personalized information um, about how to better your own home recording setup, uh, you can set that with up, up with us on Facebook or you can email us or get in touch with our uh, website. And we will schedule that. I've got one in, oh man, that's coming up quick at <laughs> 3 o'clock uh, that i got to get ready for. We also got our first mix free promotion video coming out later today. Uh, check your Facebook. Um, and oh, don't forget about first lesson free uh, with Lessons with Mara. Uh, my partner Mara teaches piano, and right now we're accepting online students uh, over the ages of nine. And uh, if you guys want to up your keyboard skills, uh, she would be happy to help you. So let's get in touch. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. I had a blast sharing this stuff with you. 
Uh, and I can't wait to talk to you guys next week. Next week we're gonna talk about uh, condenser and dynamic microphones and different polar patterns. And we'll probably talk about rigid microphones. We're just gonna talk about different microphones and kind of give an overview of that, uh, that whole world. All right, thanks for tuning in to Audio Tips with Tyler. Have a great day, everybody. Welcome to Audio Tips with Tyler. Who would like to eat some food? Meow! Welcome to Audio Tips with Tyler. Who would like to eat some food? Meow! Welcome to Audio Tips with Tyler. Who would like to eat some food? Meow! Welcome to Audio Tips with Tyler. Who would like to eat some food? Meow! Welcome to Audio Tips with Tyler. Who would like to eat some food? Meow! Welcome to Audio Tips with Tyler. 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 Who would like to eat some food? 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 Meow! 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 Meow!